Um, uh, I'm now going to introduce um, our last two speakers of the afternoon. Uh, and they are two people who it gives me the most enormous pleasure to introduce. Because they, are, they both represent our partners in continental Europe, in the European Parliament, in the EFDD group. Uh, and the first I want to introduce this afternoon is Dr. Yuri Payne. Uh, Yuri is the son of an American man and a Czech mother. And he studied nuclear physics in Prague. And after finishing and graduating in, as a nuclear physicist, he was not permitted to work as a scientist because of his religious beliefs and political activities. He was, for a while, a systems programmer, but then they demoted him to an orderly at an old people's home, and finally to a stoker in a boiler house. He was known in the intelligence service files as physicist in the category very dangerous person. In the first free parliamentary elections in June 1990, he was elected to the Czech National Council as a member of Vaclav Havel's party. He was a founder member of uh, the Civic Democratic Party, led by Vaclav Klaus. And uh, he was also a member of the Parliamentary Commission for drafting the Czech Constitution in 1992. In 2004, he was invited to work for Vaclav Klaus, president of the uh, Czech Republic, as foreign affairs and political advisor, which he went on for nine years as. And then in February 2009, he, with Petter Mark, who, as you will remember, many of you will remember, is a very old friend of ours and has spoken here many times, he created and founded the new political party, the Party of Free Citizens, and was for six years vice chairman. And this year, while Petter has retired from the European Parliament to go and direct their general election push, uh, general election, I think, October the 13th here, isn't it? Um, and we, when we hope they will break into the Parliament, um, Yuri actually took on the, his place in the European Parliament as of this September. Please give an enormous welcome to Yuri Payne. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, UK. I am very happy to be with you today. What I, what I am bringing the message is Europe, the European continent is in danger. I will try to explain what, what I mean by that. It sounds very hard. In fact, what I see in my country and in other countries in the Europe, there is growing up generation of democratic deficit. Young people who grown under subsidies and European programs and, and visiting European Parliament and so on, and they are convinced the European Parliament is the right, right choice. It might be like that. That's the, that's the democracy. And the way how they understand politics, it's, it's based on the experience of European politicians, because what European politics says to us, there is just one choice. We know what is good for you. We do not need to ask you. We implement the benefit for you. You have just to obey. And uh, In, in contrast to that, I studied nuclear physics, and I have a very private and humble suspicion. Even elementary particles, nuclear particles, do have freedom. <laughs> By experiment, we know two electrons doesn't go the same way. One of them decide, decide to have spin plus one and a half, the other minus three halves. How it's possible? They have free choice. There is not only one way. Maybe freedom is the most important element of the world.
In fact, under communists, we suffered in the same environment. The Communist Party did know what is the best choice for us, and they didn't ask us what, what uh, they have to do. They did what they decided. And what we need is plurality. We do not need unification. Even the nature is not unified. Two trees are not the same. In fact, I need freedom for me to decide my way, to make my wrong decision. Freedom means I have right to decide wrongly, right to make mistakes. I need to make my own mistakes to do that next time better. If I have no choice, I cannot learn how, how to do it better. And in fact, I need responsibility for my own mistakes. That's the life. And if somebody is coming saying, the young generation saying, there is just one way, just one choice, no alternative. Uh, that's something what, what, what uh, is not good for me. Maybe we should involve the right for mistakes in the bills of human rights. <laughs> in fact, in my country, after the Velvet Revolution, we learned the way of democratic thinking. It means there is plurality of opinions we have to discuss and we are looking together to find some compromise. In the 15th century, there was uh, theologian Peter Payne, my namesake, pupil of John Wycliffe and uh, Lollards from Oxford University, and he escaped from non-liberal environment in UK on those, time, uh, those times to the free Czech kingdom on those times. He was charged in UK for, or in England, as heretic to death penalty, and he moved to Prague. He has been there uh, cordially welcomed at Charles University, and he was very good in discussion, disputations, argumentation, and he did a lot for Czech nation as well. His deep conviction was there is not just one truth. There is plurality. There are alternatives, and we have to discuss. Many people in the history were prosecuted because, of, of, because they, they were convinced we need freedom, we need, we need uh, plurality. Many people have been killed because of that. And now is coming a generation which is saying we do not need plurality. The unification is the best program what we can do. But what is the danger? In the in, in hands of uh, European politicians has been concentrated incredible power. Maybe greater than in Soviet Union or in China. Because even, in, even President Putin must look what people think about his politics. Even he is maybe not very strong, but even he is a little bit responsible to his people. Even in China, communists must look what people accept or not. But in European Union, we can vote how we like, but the European propaganda, the European system goes its own way further without looking to our voting. <laughs> and that's the danger for Europe, because young generation growing in such conditions, convinced it's okay, we do not need any plurality, we do not need discussion, we know what is good for people. If they get this power in their hands, that could lead to the disaster. Few examples from European politician, well, politics. Angela Merkel, was facing a few years ago catastrophic migration of immigrants coming to Germany. What was her suggestion in such situation? 
increase more refugees. Juncker declared two weeks ago his intention to unify President of Commission and President of Council to one person. In fact, we are facing democratic deficit in European Union and we will, we will decrease power of European Council and give more power to administration to European Committee. So his recommendation is we are facing democratic deficit and we will solve, solve it by increasing it. Uh, Juncker drafted as well the idea we should establish European military forces, defense forces, and so on. So it means we have, we have no democratic control of military forces, and we will so solve it by moving more power to European politicians. President Macron even did the next step saying not only defense forces, but intervention forces. So he is proposing we will intervene abroad in the name of Europe, of European Union. So it seems in European politics, there is the principle. If we have problem, we will solve it by increasing the problem. It, it remains me to one sentence what uh, Soviet Minister of Defense Andrei Grechko said a couple of years ago. He said, if we cannot reach it by force, we can reach it by greater force. <laughs> In such situation, even if we all responsibilities or competencies, we will move to the Brussels, the democratic deficit will be not solved. But that's the process what we are facing too. We are looking how more and more competencies are moved to Brussels, but no one deals with the deepest problem what we are facing too, democratic, democratic deficit. In fact, in this area, we need cooperation with you from Czech Republic, from UK, Germany, all other countries. I think that's our common responsibility. We need to deal with lack of democracy on European continent. And we will probably need your help and cooperation even after Brexit. Yeah. Small last uh, example. The European Union is trying to provide and establish and, and to have single market. In the history on the European continent, we have had couple of markets. They were competing free and fair together. They were making business together. That's the historian tradition. President Macron came in his speech on Sorbonne with, with the idea uh, we get European Union as heritage and we are responsible for that and we, we must go forward. In fact, European Union is not going forwards representing European traditions and European values. It's going the opposite way. Britain is going back to European traditions, to plurality, to freedom, to responsibility. And that's what we need in my country as well. That's what we need even in all European countries. Do you think the generation of democratic deficit getting incredible power in their hands, they will one day change their mind and they will become Democrats? <laughs> no. That's why Europe is in danger and we have to cooperate and I am glad to cooperate with you and I hope we will do it for next time. Thank you.